All right, hey everybody. Yeah, so I was just going through the comments and had the user Phil Coke um, ask how to do stadiums and historical exhibitions. So I thought I'd do that just really, really quickly. <coughs> Pardon me. And then we will um, possibly do a game. So we'll see if anybody shows up. It is 9.27 p.m. Uh, Steve Tate and I last night, though, in Action PC Baseball, played, a, played two uh, quote-unquote exhibition games in our Howie Shanks League. Um, and Steve and I split the twin bill. It was a lot of fun. And again, really looking forward to that. Things have been very quiet in our Discord. I know Steve is getting a league file ready to go for everybody to play test. We're going to have exhibition games coming up all this week so people can, um, for owners of Action PC Baseball, and I know you're saying Out of the Park 24, but like to cover business first. Uh, for those of you that, that own Action PC, you can certainly download the file, play with it, tweak your lineups. We're also going to do um, we're also going to do some uh, broadcast exhibition games between MV Steve Tate and uh, Tate, Steve Tate's and my channel, and then um, have a little bit of time where there'll be some trade talk, and then we start the season. Clee Baseball Fan 879 says good evening Beatles. Just found Dick Grove passed away 92 at 92 yesterday for complications from a long stroke. Uh, Dick wrote an excellent shortstop for the Pittsburgh Pirates, and uh, may his memory be eternal. Um, thank you for passing on that news, Tim. I had not heard that. So, um, Dick wrote uh, a mainstay of the Pittsburgh Pirates, and uh, an excellent defensive shortstop. I mean, Pittsburgh blessed with... Uh, Two of the greatest shortstops of all time, of course, Hannes Wagner and Argy Vaughn. Uh, but Dick wrote a very, very important part of uh, the Pirates franchise. Speaking of the franchise um, itself, the Pirates' um, best record in the National League. They're in first place in the National League Central. And uh, the second best record in baseball. So, uh, behind Tampa Bay, I believe, actually. So, um, hopefully that uh, Mr. Grote will be smiling on this... Uh, very young uh, Pirates team that's uh, playing playing with a lot of heart. All right, so people wanting to know how to get exhibitions work. Yeah, don't forget O'Neill Cruz. Uh, he did die, uh, but of course not. We're looking forward to O'Neill Cruz being back. Um, our star shortstop out until August, but uh, the Pirates playing so well, and if they can keep this up and keep playing some good baseball by the time he returns in August. We're, yeah, we're hoping for some good things. I think that Andrew McCutch and Carlos Santana uh, certainly a huge, huge boost for these for this young team to get some guidance. Um, so looking forward to some excellent things. Today's game against the Washington Nationals rained out. We have a lot of rain right now, um, not only in Pennsylvania, but uh, in Maryland and District of Columbia. So there will be a doubleheader tomorrow. Okay, now on to Out of the Park 24, which again, this version is the version. Just hands down, it's brilliant. So Phil Koch, who's a member of our sports community, had, um, I guess two days ago, watched an Out of the Park game and was wondering how to use ballparks in historical exhibitions. So I thought I would just set one up and uh, we'll do it. So um, O'Neill Cruz could eventually be an all-time great pirate shortstop. I mean, I think it's way too early to tell, but uh, certainly this kid has the tools. That's for sure a big clue. Um, I haven't checked in to see how your Reds are doing. Let's let's uh, have a look at how they're doing tonight. Um, seeing that they uh, smacked around uh, Robbie's uh, Texas Rangers a bit, so that's always fun. That is always fun. Cincinnati and Oakland just in warm-up right now, so hopefully uh, Cincinnati cruises to a pretty good series because, again, uh, the team I don't like in the National League Central is the Milky Brewers. All right. Anyhow, why would we... I'm not sure what you're asking there. But anyhow, all right, I'm unclear. So there's there's two ways to approach it, but they ultimately do the same thing. If you have Out of the Park Baseball and you bought it on Steam, there's a mod called the Stadium Mod. And there's also the Uniforms Mod, which I strongly suggest you get, because if you're playing back in old days, the players in the, you know, the high stirrups and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you don't, you have to install the ballparks. But either way, 
um, it's really pretty easy and if you have the stadium mod it's super super simple so for those not aware um, really the two most powerful things you can do for out of the park baseball again apart from the season replays which that's just a couple clicks you're ready to rock um, and the custom game which allows you to really do anything including replicate the Howie Shanks Baseball League and actually I was thinking about it we could have actually done this um, we didn't need to do an action PC baseball I'm glad we are more people I think have that game in this community uh, but because of the draft it's just a case of creating the rosters which is the same thing you have to do um, in action PC so um, I hope to be able to um, get the Howie Shanks League into out of the park 24 which is what uh, the Todd B, who had the idea for doing this, um, originally wanted it in Out of the Park 24, and I think it would be a lot of fun. In both games. I mean, Action PC will be the official Howie Shanks League, but we'll do some games on Out of the Park and do a comparison at the end of each season. All right. So, there we are. Late Nostogi with the wrong lighter. There we are. But what we're going to do is go to Historical uh, Exhibition because this is what Phil had asked. So Historical Exhibition is a really, really neat mode that allows you to play um, any World Series um, or you can pit any two player, any two teams in baseball history against one another or, um, and I shouldn't say any two teams, so teams from 1901 um, onward. So um, we don't, so the 19th century is included in out of park baseball, but not in tournaments. But you can actually set up tournaments with as many as 70 teams. That's a 7-0. Um, I don't know why why anybody would want to do that, but uh, hey, it could happen. That's a huge tournament. Actually, I think Christopher Slovic um, does a huge tournament with like 70 teams or something. His Creators Cup. All right. So, but let's talk about ballparks. All right, and I think it's probably um, a good idea to let's just select a World Series, and uh, I think a good one to do would be uh, 19 let's do 1971. That was the uh, World Series Pirates Orioles. It was the first uh, World Series that ever had a night game. Pirates winning this one, of course. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to create this exhibition. So if you have um, if you bought this on Steam, and uh, I know some people have and some people don't like Steam. Um, don't know why, because it keeps the game, especially for this, um, it was updated, it's updated automatically. Okay, so we have here, so we have all our teams and rules and everything like that. Uh, you can set your rosters and lineups. So if you have this in Steam, um, you have to do this uh, it's a little bit differently if you don't we go to play ball right now and if I were to start this game we would be at Three River Stadium as it was in 1971 okay that simple I'm not gonna start that right now but it's set we're gonna return to our main screen we might just go ahead and mess around with the um, the 1971 World Series it was a really good one but if you want to create a World Series and you didn't buy this in Steam, and let's go ahead and rename this exhibition um, to the 1971 World Series. This is a nice little addition now that's been in since um, Out of Part 23, is before you had to load a different game to be able to uh, do a rename. Now you don't have to. So the 1971 World Series is ready to go to play. All right, so we're going to go ahead and cancel. What you want to do if you do not have the ballparks is you're going to have to create a custom game. Um, but the ballparks are basically stored in the data directory, which I'll show you. So if I wanted to recreate this and I didn't buy it on Steam, there's really only one way to do it to get the ballparks. So I have to go to custom game. We're going to say no thanks to challenge mode. All right. So what we can do is use historical bay or you know any historical league from 1871 to 2022. So we'll do historical. All right, and then we're going to do all this kind of stuff. Blah 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 blah. This is not important. 
uh, we can import the complete history of baseball up to that year. So this is up to 2015, if that's what we're choosing. But what I want to do is, again, I'm going to select 1971. Okay, This is not as elegant a workaround as um, the, if you want the ballparks, this is the way to do it. Okay, We're not going to be importing Negro Leagues for this because we're just going to recreate a World Series and we're not going to use random players. Okay, And then we're going to go to our next step. And we're basically... Um, well, actually, I'm actually doing this the hard way. I'm going to make this even easier. I just realized as we're going into this, um, I, I want to create this, do this a little differently, so you'll pardon me for backing up again. Because basically what we're going to do is create a custom league with two teams, and that's it. But I will show you how that's all done. So let's cancel all of this. We don't want this. Yep. So we're going to do a new custom game. So here's what you want to do. You actually want to do fictional. All right, so forget historical. Do fictional. This is even easier. All right, now, what do we want to do? Right, we're going to have just, we're going to have number of teams. So let's say we have two divisions, right? We want to, we can rename everything. So, number of teams, all right, so we can just do two teams, and, right, we're basically just going to set up just a World Series, is all we're going to do, um, the number of teams, right, we can we just knock all of this down, because all we really care about, again, is playing this World Series, so make everything two, that's all you got to do, all right, um, we can even just knock this down if we want. Boom, 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 boom. Right? Okay. So then we're going to go to our next step. And again, this is, if you do not own this game on Steam, this is you want to, this is what you want to do. Alright. Um, you can name the leagues up if you want. Um, I would leave all this checked. Triple A, double A, class A, whatever short season A. Just leave all that checked. That's fine. All right. Now, the next thing that we actually that we want to do here is we want to switch to historical team selection. So switch to that. Okay. We have our two teams here. Okay. So we're going to select a year, and we're going to go through this, and we're going to find 1971. And we're going to pick the Baltimore Orioles. And down here, once again, 1971. 71, and Pittsburgh Pirates. So this would be closer to the way you would do it in, um, uh, say, Action PC Baseball. You don't really have to do anything over here. We're just doing these two. So we have the, the, the Orioles and the Pirates. We're going to click the next step. All right. Um, we don't want to do standard settings. What we want to do is 1971 settings. So this is what's happening in the game if you're just recreating a World Series. Okay. Now, if you want to use the ballpark mod, since I am using Steam, I have to select this. If you bought this straight from Out of the Park Developments, you do not have to use this. Okay. We're not going to hold a draft, anything like that. All right, we're going to play the typical series length, right, is we're just going to just do this up a little bit differently, okay? Um, number of games, um, so let's, we're going to try seven, okay? And we're going to make sure that that's checked. Again, doing all this, I would say that, um, that you do just buy the game from Steam if you want to do this. All right. We don't now. We want to set the season start date. We can do that. I don't remember the start date of the um, the World Series, but let's just say five October. That works. Okay. Let's do this. This is just basically the same thing that you want to do if you want to set it to one. You know, for ratings one to one hundred, um, and all this just to get to ballparks. But that's fine player pictures, 
no fictional pictures I choose that because I don't use face jet um, you can enable automatic evolution of the league if you have the ballpark mod which I do okay I'm gonna click the next step and we'll just put uh, series 71 just so I know to get rid of this because I just don't want to keep it um, I suggest always playing in commissioner mode um, especially because uh, that allows you, you know, moving around schedules, actually having Judge Kennesaw Mountain Landis powers, if you will. Okay, and just going to initialize, and then I'll show you how to assign ballparks. All right, we're not worrying about these guys at all. So I'm going to take the Pirates, of course, and we're going to start the game. Yeah, right, Big Clue? That is funny. Now, you'll notice one difference that's a bit of a drag. And that's this. When you have the stadium mod, it also loads in the actual logos. When you're doing this, this sort of league, it's you're going to get these things. And you have to switch them up, create logos. I'm not going to worry about doing that. All right, but we are with the Pirates, so we're going to go to our home screen, and we're going to go to Settings. All right, we're going to go to Edit Ballpark. So the game was smart enough to already give me uh, 1971 Three Rivers, and I know this is because of the advertising out there. This was gone by 1975, and they added in more boxes um, out beyond center field. But... I want to show you how to do this and I've already done a ballpark tutorial but again this is for setting up a World Series if you do not have the game on Steam and you haven't installed the Stadium mod. I'd suggest getting on Steam even if you bought it once um, from Out of the Park Developments. It goes on sale frequently. Alright so I know it has this but what if I want to instead play this 1971 World Series just for giggles in PNC Park or I want to play it in Forbes. So if I go to 3D model, again it's a bit more cumbersome which is why I think buying it on Steam is nice. Uh, nice looking, well, nice rendering of Three Rivers but I can't say it's a nice looking ballpark. So if we go to load 3D model, alright, so it's always going to be program files x86. Now, for non-Steam users, it's going to be out of the park developments, out of the park 24, what have you. And your data subdirectory, when you follow that whole tree, you'll get to ballparks. And you have to download these ballparks from the out of the park forums if you don't have this mod. Okay, so you have you have some extra steps to do this. And we're going to play this in Forbes Field 1950. To 69, hit the obj file, the obj file, load, and we wait for a minute, and there's Forbes. Um, at night, we can do Forbes at day. Back here is the University of Pittsburgh um, campus in the Oakland section of Pittsburgh. Da, 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 da. And then we can do night, day, whatever. So let's just do uh, daytime. There it is, and that's, you see, Pitt back there. The other thing that you have to do is you go to pictures and coordinates and you notice here when you see Citizens Bank Ballpark, unless you're doing Citizens Bank Ballpark, you don't have the park factors. So I want to do actions and I want to auto import data into this park. Do I want to keep the park current park factors for this park? I can click no, click yes, I'm just going to click yes. Alright, and there we go. Once you see your ballpark, there's Forbes. Forbes Field's ready to go. And then we would just do the same thing um, for uh, Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, and then just play your World Series. It's Again, it's more cumbersome, but um, it is what it is. Whereas with our 1971 series, when you have that mod, you saw what it took. It's pick two teams, and you're ready to go. So, Phil, I hope that helps you. I realize it's a a long way around to do things but it does get the job done you also do this when you want to assign um, ballparks just in any just in a regular season 
So you're doing a season replay. Let's say you're doing, um, I know Bernard Strom is doing um, the 1950 Red Sox. Well, I know he's doing a PC replay baseball, but for shits and giggles, let's just say he's doing it in out of the park 24. If he doesn't have the stadium mod, he would actually have to go through and assign ballparks um, for uh, for each club, which is nice. Which is nice. And of course, once you're inside the 3D model, um, let's let it load up again. Of course, you can do all kinds of moving the camera around, zoom out, zoom in, um, lower, raise, um, whatever. But anyhow, if we wanted to do this in Forbes Field, that's what we're going to do. Um, but we'll go back again to load 3D model, and we're going to set this back to Three Rivers. So the program will always remember the last subdirectory you were in when you're working with ballparks. And scroll down, find the proper park for your year. This has not only the mod, but the ballparks that you can download from, um, from out of the park. We'll have every Major League ballpark from 1901 to present. So we went through River Stadium 1970 to 1974. Again, just the OBJ file. And I'll just remind you, for those of you who didn't catch my other ballpark tutorial, and there we have Three Rivers again, that if you're using the 30 ballparks that come with the game, then that's a POD file. If you're using these homebrew ballparks, you want to do OBJ, which is a wavefront object file. Um, for 3D artists out there, I could put this into Blender, Maya, what have you, and I could do all kinds of stuff that I wanted with this park. Okay, but always make sure to set your coordinates. Again, you can see here, we have Citizens Bank Park, that is not correct. Actions, um, and what I want to do is auto import. You can also manually import data, but actually just go to auto import. Click yes, and now it's back to Three River Stadium. And that's that's really it for this tutorial. Um, POD is um, no, it's not park on demand. POD a, a POD file. I forget. I can't remember Big Clue what they're using to create because the the out of the park the the, uh, the ballparks that come with are absolutely beautiful. Um, I forget what that what file extension that goes with. That's with a specific program. There's John DFW. Good to see you. All right. So anyhow, we're gonna back out of this, and we're gonna get back to the start screen and go back to our regular uh, scheduled whatever. So we can do the 1971 World Series as I saved it, and uh, this will have proper logos and everything. Okay. Historical exhibition file. Always read this. Always click yes. If you click no. It becomes unplayable in exhibition mode. And we're ready to go, Pat Dobson, Doc Ellis. So we can do 1971, or we can just go back to our all-time greats. The um, the ballparks, they're done by Mike Silva. I think he did, did a great job. Um, they are homebrew parks. They're done in Google SketchUp. And if you guys are interested in how he does that, there's a series of YouTube videos where he takes you through uh, creating these ballparks from scratch. And it's it's really... It's it, it's an intensive operation, but it's really really satisfying. And he shows you how to take uh, I forget I think it's Clay's ballparks or something that he goes to for these the flat schematics of the ballparks. But it also gives you the profiles of the bleachers, grandstands, everything like that, the walls, all that. You get all the dimensions and shows you how to do these. Then in Google SketchUp, using those as a guide, really really um, good good stuff. So there's John, uh, there's Aaron Reed. Welcome in, Aaron. <clears throat> so, um, I, you know what? I'm not. I have this set up, but I'm not going to do the World Series here tonight. Um, just going to do another game. So this is already saved. That's the other thing that you'll notice, by the way, in exhibitions, whether it's a tournament or you're doing a World Series, or you're just playing two teams in history against one another. Um, you, you'll notice there's no save. You don't have because this is kind of a it's a, it's an engine that runs alongside the main game engine. So if I just return to that, it's just automatically going to close and save. Now we're going to go back to our all-time grades and just have some fun, right? All right, and I think this is the one I want. 
This is the one I want. So I hope everybody had a good day, Friday. Yeah, absolutely, John. I've been saying that. I mean, <coughs> you know, unfortunately, you know, Steam does take a cut. So if you buy it from Out of the Park Developments directly, they get everything. However, um, you know, Steam keeps the game automatically updated. You go to Workshop Shop Central, and let's see. Let's go back to Workshop Central. This is something that you're not going to see in the regular game. Um, rather, for some bizarre reason, um, I mean, you can go to the forums, everything like that. Uh, but if you go to Workshop Central, um, you can actually search the workshop, and let's open it. I don't think there's been much done on this lately. So, I mean, if you want historical uniforms, logos, journey fonts for... Um, this is the, the uniform mod I told you about. This is the stadiums, right? The face gen pack, not terribly interested in that stuff. Um, you can get diff set different classic skins if you want. Um, but these two are the most important for out of the park baseball. And then make sure you have real player images because face gen is face gen's really good, I think, with uh, with later players, but um, not so much so with uh, earlier players. All right, so back to it. Let's let's uh, find what's on the schedule and we'll do a quick game just for fun. But John's right. So let's look what's on the Major League Baseball schedule here um, and see who's playing whom, as you would expect. Uh, well, let me see. We have the Brewers at Red Sox. That might be a fun game. That's uh, Higuera against Cy Young. Um, what else do we have here? We have Ed Walsh and Fred Saberhagen. So um, how about we do the Chicago White Sox, Kansas City Royals? We don't get to see a lot of Royals on, on the uh, in the YouTube land. Let's see who's Big Clue. Let's see Big Clue. What about those Reds? Who are they playing? Are they playing anybody? fun. Hmm. Let me see, let me see, let me see. What are the Reds? Yeah. So the Reds are playing the Mets. So Vandermeer and Fernandez, that would be fun. I don't care. <laughs> I know everybody is super geared up about um, I don't know why we have a suspended game in the sixth inning. Royals Tigers but uh, anyhow I know everybody is getting really really excited about uh, about the Howie Shanks League and I know I am too uh, the other thing that we could do here and, and um, at the out of the park baseball has is you can actually for any games that have completed scores um, you can watch replays you can watch highlight reels you can look at a game log. So if we were looking at the Twins and Indians 9-6, if we go into this replay, right, we could just start it and it'll play. So we just do continue. This game is going to play, so let's let it have some fun. I think this is another indication of where they're going toward as far as trying to get the MLB the show, folks. And so this is a game, again, that was already played, so maybe you might want to go back, watch the whole thing, or just check the highlights. Gaylord Perry. And since I've done this game already, um, this is this is something I'm not going to redo, but just something I wanted to show you. So this is actually replaying the whole game. We're going to go ahead, um, just we're going to exit this thing. All right. Highlight reel. Basically, it's just going to pick up anything that's going from important plays in the game stuff and it'll keep advancing. Okay. So just uh, 
couple little things that you can do. We can uh, the play by play speed, of course, we can switch to slow if we want. So there you go. Right now, it's showing the score, the inning, what's happening. Which is, again, a nice way to revisit certain games. So let's say you're playing in a season and there was a no-hitter. And you'd like to see just the highlights of that no-hitter. Um, you could do that. It's not... Uh, and something that just automatically saves. So, really, really love what they're doing with Out of the Park Baseball. Once again, we're getting everything here as far as the count, all that stuff, who's at bat. And Killebrew gets himself, uh, I think he, yeah, I think it was a two RBI double for this. Oh, Killebrew. I think he gets gunned down here. Yeah, I remember this game. So Killebrew got gunned down. Killebrew not known for his uh, speed. He's definitely no max carry. So that did that inning. And there was a lot of highlights, as you can see here. Big, long fly ball and gone. Kent Herbeck. love to see something like this in um, action PC baseball. I think it would be great. Now, I think this game gets a little bit of unfair treatment. All right, now notice, now we're at the bottom of the third. So something's going to happen here, bottom of the third. Gives you our situation. And so real nice. It's something to just catch highlights if you don't want to rewatch the whole game. I think this is really, really cool. I know Walter Johnson did not pitch this entire game. He got, he got some smack down. Now, notice it's jumping to the fourth. And so on, and so on, and so on. You can turn off pause between at bats and just look at highlights. So pretty nice. Um, you can also set different camera views, but you should, I think everybody here should know enough about um, out the park baseball that I don't have to show you that. So a very feature laden program that uh, unfortunately um, is also very. And of course, you can still do that replay here, by the way, too, which is really fun. So. It even works in replay and full game mode. And then you've got to go, it'll go through all this, of course. And that's it. And it will do that whole game. So, a great way to rewatch a game. Right. But let's exit and. Uh, Let's go back to our schedule. Let's pick two teams and just do a quick it. Um, anybody sees two teams? I don't know how well you can see the, uh, the schedule here, but if you see two teams you'd like to see playing one another, we can certainly do that. I'm kind of leaning towards Reds and Mets here, but uh, we also have. Jim, I'll tell you what. No, let's do the Orioles and the Tigers. We have Jim Palmer and. Uh, Justin Verlander. So I'm gonna. It doesn't matter which one. So when you're playing in commissioner mode, what you want to do is you just want to act as one of these teams. Doesn't matter. So I'll just do, because I'm not gonna manage. So just go to act as, and then Baltimore Orioles, and it'll say now uh, resume game versus Tigers. Um, I didn't realize I had one going on. So let's pick another one. Come back to that. Braves and that. Oh, Cubs and Phillies. Let's do that. So we'll do Chicago Cubs, play game versus Phillies. If you don't play in commissioner mode, you can't do this. So you would, if you just want to play one team, and whatever you create, whether it's a historical replay or whatever, you don't need commissioner mode. But I like to do this because I want to see other teams playing as well. 
All right, so Philadelphia Phillies, Chicago Cubs, no loss between, no love loss between these two teams, certainly. We'll be playing at Wrigley today, leading off for the visiting Philadelphia Phillies in center field. Uh, Billy Hamilton batting second. Second baseman Chase Utley batting third. Ah, this is why I wanted to do this game, because we don't get to see Chuck Klein a lot. So Chuck Klein, and right, in fact, if memory serves, John Klein, or, uh, Chuck Klein didn't make it again in the Howie Shanks League. Batting cleanup at first base, Ryan Howard batting fifth at third. Uh, recent Hall of Famer, <laughs> Scott Rowland. Uh, let you comment on that yourselves. Batting sixth in left field, lefty O'Doul. Batting seventh, catching Carlos Ruiz. Batting eighth at shortstop, Dave Beauty Bancroft. And batting ninth in pitching. Uh, looks like we have Pete Alexander. So this could be Alexander against Brown. Should be a nice one. For the Chicago Cubs, leading off in left field, Kai Kai Kyler batting second at first base, Mark Grace batting in the third slot in center field, Hack Wilson batting cleanup in right field, Sammy Sosa. Mr. Cub, Ernie Banks at short, batting fifth. Rick Wilkins will catch and bat sixth. Woody English playing the hot corner, he's in the number seven slot tonight. Johnny Evers at second, batting eighth, and Mordecai Brown batting ninth and pitching so let's get to Wrigley computer AI has taken care of both let's do this let's be the first game I've broadcast in quite a while with Steve and I playing um, some head-to-head -head stuff and everything so here we are Wrigley Field and again the parks that come with the game are just beautiful, just beautiful. there's the Ivy and then out there under Hack Wilson there's actually place in Wrigley was the groundskeeper's quarters, but Wilson actually lived there for a time. All right, so here is Billy Hamilton. And I think we have the wrong Billy Hamilton, as a matter of fact, the wrong picture. I believe this is slide Billy, not this Billy, but we'll leave him up there for this game. All right, so here we go, a nice big pan around of Wrigley in the north side. That is just so cool looking. I love that. Not quite MLB the show, but damn fine for a Tex baseball sim. And here we go. Hamilton swings, hard grounded first. And this one, Mark Grace has it and tosses onto Morokai Brown covering. And Hamilton is retired for the first out here at Wrigley. Chase Utley hitting 217 with a run batted in. He's just hitting 118. Brown has the sign from Wilkins. Brown winds and delivers. Utley cuts on this one. Little grounder to third. And up with it is Woody English to make the play. Makes a good peg to first. So two quick outs. And we've been talking about Chuck Klein. Serious power hitter. Um, excellent contact. And uh, Hall of Famer, we just don't see him uh, really around the community much at all. Brown has the target from Wilkins. Here's the 2-1. Chuck Klein. Klein swings. Clean slap into center field for a base hit. And the Phillies pick up their first hit in the top of the first. So Chuck Klein aboard for Ryan Howard. Howard hitting just a 0 59. He does have a solo home run. It's just 1 for 17. Klein not especially speedy at first. Brown delivers. And Ryan Howard, a big rip and a miss. And that does it. So the curveball by Mordecai Brown takes care of the Phillies. They get a hit, strand one, and we go to the bottom of the first inning. It's the Phillies, nothing. And the Cubs coming to bat, and there is D. Scott Howard. Again, John, as I've said, I, I, I've just let the AI do both. These files um, are huge. And so what I'm doing is tweaking around and stuff like that. So um, trying to get, let it do a mix of what it does for now. I want to get a sense of what it's doing for lineups for each team. Um, and it chose um, Johnny Evers, which a lot of power in here. I think Evers in there more probably for his defense. It's not that he's not on here. These are 40-man rosters plus reserve rosters. Um, so 
you can set this the way you want. So if, if you're looking at a team, and like I had to do it with the Pirates, and actually for the Cubs, so this all-time quick start that comes with this game does not have Ernie Banks on the Cubs at all. So I had to import. Um, if you don't like the lineups, change them. Even if the AI is controlling both teams, you can, you can switch lineups, do all kinds of stuff. All right, here is Kai Kai Kyler. Kyler one for four, 250. And Grover Alexander ready to deal old Pete with the 0-1 delivery to Kyler. Kyler swings, and this went to center field, and this is going to get down for a base hit. So Billy Hamilton moving in on that ball, but signed to play it safely and Kyler with serious speed at first so we're tied with one hit each here in the bottom of the first and here's Mark Grace in fact they did a game earlier with the Cubs and Ryan Sandberg was in there so it's going to pick different lineups which you could control by the way just like you can in action PC you can create a bunch of lineups and uh, you can get this game just like action PC is 10 miles wide 10 miles deep Kyler aggressive lead off first. Here's the delivery, and the runner's going. Hit and run is on. The only place is going to be to, the only place to go is first. Chase Utley up with it, and fires on to first for one out. And Kyler moves into scoring position for Hack Wilson. Hack Wilson's on Steve's team. Steve has like 317 outfielders in his uh, Howie Shanks uh, team. Wilson off to a pretty good start at 261 average six ribbies including a home run. Kyler good lead off second. Alexander checks Kyler. The one two delivery to Hack Wilson. And Wilson is going to get this one into right field. And this is going to score right the plate the plate and in there is Kyler. So Kyler scores from second. On the Hack Wilson single, and it's the Cubs one and the Phillies nothing. And we all know Sammy Sosa. Alexander checks Wilson. No speed at first. Sosa cuts through that one. And that one, a little slider by Alexander. So two away, and a Cubs run in, and that brings up Mr. Cub. Banks off to a frigid start in the season. He is 0 for 5. Banks rips on this one. High fly ball to left, but ranging in on it and camping under it is lefty O'Doul. He'll bring it in. For Chicago, one run, two hits, no errors, and a runner left. And the Cubs leading the Philadelphia Phillies one to nothing as we move to the top of the second inning. Uh, D. Scott Howard says I, he just posted his team info in Discord. He thinks. Uh, what did you all think? I did not look um, in Discord. So, D. Scott, I'll have a look at that um, probably after this game or tomorrow. But uh, I know you have a fine team. There is PQ River. So, D. Scott uh, basically taking the community draft team, and I think he's got a hell of a team, actually. So, looking forward to season start in about a week, I guess, after a week of exhibition games when Steve gets the, uh, once he gets the league file up. All right, so Scott Rowland, he is three for eight, a 375 average. Uh, three finger Brown has struck out one thus far. Brown deals to Rowland, the full count. Strike three. Rowland looks at a call, strike three. So nice change up there by Brown to get his second strike out of the game. And it brings up lefty O'Doul. O'Doul hitting at the 294 foot, he's five for 17. So Good start for the Phillies. Excellent contact hitter, lefty old dude. Let's check game time temperature here in Chicago. Partly cloudy and the temperature of 41 degrees and the wind left to right at 11 miles per hour. Brown delivers to O'Doul. Here's the 0-1. O'Doul swings on this one and he's going to send this to the gap and left and O'Doul going for extra bases. The ball uh, hitting the Ivy out there and Lefty O'Doul with the one out double. So Kyler making the hard peg in there but O'Doul just digging for second. Jets all the way into overdrive. 
afterburners, what have you. So Duel in scoring position, one down. Phillies looking to tie it up here. Here's uh, catcher Carlos Luis. He is one for three. Brown peers in, has the sign from Wick, Rick Wilkins. Duel very slow there as far as the base throw. The 0 2. And this one is going to be dumped into right field. Base hit, that little flare. And that's going to get the runner to third. And they're going to hold O'Doul there. So the Phillies picking up their third hit of the game, thanks to the Carlos Luis little flare single. And here is Beauty Bancroft batting in the eighth slot. Bancroft hitting just 133. Does have an RBI in the season. Runners in the corners. O'Doul at third. Luis at first. Brown works from the stretch. Here's the pitch to Bancroft. Bancroft swings. This one fairly deep to right, and this should score the tying run. And here's the throw to the plate, and he is dead to right. O'Doul gunned down. And what a play. What a play. An outfield assist by Sammy Sosa. Let's have a look at that guy again. So the Phillies turned away, and let's have a look. So Sosa making the strong throw. Ranging back on it, and he's got it. And Sosa firing it home, and O'Doul dead to rights. All right, bottom of the second, and it's the Cubs one, the Phillies nothing. Cubs have sent Wilkins, English, and Evers. Yeah, he definitely was a dead duck, absolutely. Cousin Ken Castro gracing us here at Wrigley Field. Welcome in, cousin. Yeah, these graphics are, they're, they've really done such a good And there's, again, little nuances here. You watch, you watch the, the infielders especially get into set position. It's so cool. All right, Carlos Ruiz to set the target here for Rick Wilkins. And apologies, uh, Cousin Ken, the wrong Billy Hamilton uh, picture is out there, but it's your slide Billy out there. Here's the pitch. Wilkins swings, and this one a liner to the corner and left. That's going to be good for extra bases. Wilkins making the big turnaround first, and he's going to slide in there with a leadoff double. So lefty O'Doul having to hurry his throw in there. So that is the third hit for the Chicago Cubs. And here is third baseman Woody English. Nothing for three. Wilkins, conservative lead at second. Alexander peers over his right shoulder, has a check at the, uh, the Cubs catcher. Peers in, has the sign for catcher Ruiz. Here's the 1-0. Showing bunt here. And the only play to first. So... Woody English bunting the runner over Rick Wilkins. And here's Johnny Evers. Three finger Brown waits on deck. Uh, this is Evers' first plate appearance, so indeed we did have Ryan Sandberg um, in an earlier game with the Cubs. So Evers bats left. Alexander works from the stretch. One down on the one two. Johnny Evers cuts and misses. Nice, nice pitch. Big, big hammer thrown by old Pete. So two away, and it brings up um, Mordecai Brown. Three finger is just 0 for 1. Another nice thing that you will see um, that the game tracks this year is how they do um, situation situationally. So um, you'll see like innings 1 to 3, how many in bats and what their average is. So uh, lots of little additions and some major additions as well uh, to out of the park 24. <coughs> it's good to have you here for a bit, Cousin Ken. Alexander once more from the stretch. Brown swings in the first pitch. This is a flare to, to right field. And this is going to get down for a base hit. And three finger Brown helping his own cause with an RBI single. This went down in front of Chuck Klein and right, and the Cubs now leading the Phillies 2-0 in the bottom of the second. And we're at the top of the order for the Cubbies. 
Kai Kai Kyler is one for one wearing his Pirates livery, having a great career both with the Pirates and with the Chicago Cubs. And I had to make a decision, and I felt it was the correct decision to put Kyler with the Cubs as opposed to the Pirates. Um, after looking at baseball reference and a number of other things, uh, he really, really was more defined, I think, as a Chicago Cub. Round on first, two away, two nothing in the bottom of the second as Alexander delivers and Kyler, a little number to third, strong throw across the diamond, however, by Scott Rowland will take care of Kyler. And Howard had to dig that one out, a bit of a, bit of a low throw, but able to retire the speedy Kyler. But the Chicago Cubs pick up a run on two hits, no errors, and a runner left. Top of the third, it's the Cubs two and the Phillies nothing. Pete Alexander slide Billy Hamilton with the wrong picture and Chase Utley do up for the nine from the city of brotherly love. Alexander is making his first appearance in this league. Brown with two strikeouts deals legend to legend and this one line to left and this is going to get down in the corner. Alexander's going to have himself at least a double. So how about these two immortal pitchers helping their own cause? So that's the third base knock for the Philadelphia Phillies. and Or I'm sorry, the fourth for the Phillies. And old Pete finds himself in scoring position. And here is slide Billy Hamilton. Hamilton nothing for one in the season hitting just 136. Brown deals. Here's the 1-1. Hamilton swings and he sends this to left. And this is going to get down for a base hit. So the Cubs coming out here with the lumber. Alexander thought about coming home. They flashed the stop sign. So nobody out. Runners at the corners. Philadelphia threatening Hamilton with serious speed. And here is Chase Utley. Utley nothing for one. Wilkins sets the target. Brown from the stretch. And Utley sends this liner to center. And that's going to score the Phillies' first run here in the top of the third. So the Phils cut this lead in half. It is now two to one. Ash for Wrigley Field. Chuck Klein. Chuck Klein one for one. Again, a Hall of Famer we don't see a lot about. We don't see a lot of, we don't talk a lot about, but uh, a great, great slugger, Chuck Klein. Philadelphia Phillies. Billy Hamilton at second. Chase Utley at first as three finger brown. Full count delivery to Chuck Klein. Chuck Klein swings this one. Line to left. Does it have the distance? It does not. So tagging at third. Or tagging from second. It's Billy Hamilton. So Hamilton makes it in there. Runs to the corners. One down. Philadelphia, the tying run just 90 feet away. And Billy Hamilton, Brian Howard just needs to put it in play. And the Phillies tie it up. Howard nothing for one. Brown working for the stretch. Count even on Ryan Howard. The runner's going, and they got him dead to right. So Utley fancying himself a bit of Ty Cobb. It <coughs> just didn't happen this time. So that's uh, Rick Wilkins in six tries. has gunned down two runners in the season. Count goes full to Ryan Howard. Now bases, uh, now two down, I should say. Howard needing a safe hit to tie this one up, but the Phillies with one in. Howard cuts and misses, and that does it. However, Philadelphia picks up a runner, three hits, no errors, a runner left in scoring position, and they cut the lead in half. It's now two to one with Cousin Ken showing up. The Phillies starting to do something. The Phillies out hitting the Cubs, six to four, no errors in this game. Um, John, I'm not quite sure how they set this up. I would have to have a close look at the um, statistics and see um, how this was set up. This is not something I created. Um, if I created something like this, um, I think I would do it like a Howie Shanks thing and try to make some judgment calls. I guess the best way to check it would be to look at... Uh, Look at one of these players, go to Classic View, and see what they did um, in whatever year is picked for them. 
Uh, but it's a lot of fun um, either way. So if they're doing it as a conglomeration like the Baseball History Collection Action PC, still very, very, very fun. All right, Mark Grace will lead it off, followed by Hack Wilson and Sammy Sosa here in the Cubs' third. 2-1 Cubs lead. Alexander has two strikeouts and an extra base hit. Here's the delivery to Grace. Grace swinging on the first pitch, and this one a weak little tapper to second base. And Chase Utley has it and tosses it on to Ryan Howard from the 4-3 put out. One down. Yep, heck of a Phillies um, outfield. Absolutely. All right, thanks for coming in, Tim. He says he's going to go film a game. Wishing everybody a good evening. Now, see, there you go. That's what I was trying to get Robbie to do, Aaron. Like, forever. So you did, uh, you made data discs for all the seasons of baseball for Windows from 1880 all the way up to 1997. Good. Now you will never, ever, ever, ever need to use that encyclopedia again for season four. You got it all done. And if you watched my tutorial video last night and the two others I did before that, you can create any sort of league you want. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. And you must be getting around that game really well. And he says you like the hybridness of all the players involved. Well, when you're dealing with that many seasons, and this is just, again, 1880 to 1997, that's still, that's quite a few seasons there. What, 117 baseball seasons? That you got infinite baseball possibilities right there, my friend. All right, Hack Wilson batting with one down. Wilson is one for one with an RBI. Here's the 1 0 delivery from Alexander to Wilson. He had an RBI single, and Wilson this time a little comebacker. And this one basically just tapped back to Alexander, who tosses on to Ryan Howard for out number two. Sammy Sosa has yet to homer in the young, uh, the young season. He's nothing for one today. Just uh, And he's three for 23 overall. So uh, Sosa maybe not using the juice. We'll see. Alexander pitches the count even on Sosa. Sosa swings. This one lined to center field. Base hit. So Sosa is aboard. That is the fifth Chicago base hit. As Billy Hamilton plays it on the bounce. Here's Mr. Cub, Ernie Banks. Ernie Banks and Billy Williams never getting to see a World Series. Alexander deals to Mr. Cub. Flight out his last time up. And this one, fly ball to right and in foul territory. Making the catch is Chuck Klein covering a lot of real estate here in right field at Wrigley. So... That does it for Chicago. No runs, a hit, no errors, a runner left. And we head to the top of the fourth inning. The Cubs 2, Philadelphia 1. Mordecai Brown will face Scott Rowland, Lefty O'Doul, and Carlos Ruiz. So I'm, I'm not sure what you mean here. No organizations and no teams. That's because... Aaron, would you mind just sort of, how did you find those? I'm not really sure what you did. So no organizations and no teams. But you, oh, you made data disks, but okay, that's, okay. But you, you have no teams. Ah, all right. Well, I'll, I'll assist you um, with some, um, yeah, I'll, I'll assist you with some stuff. You didn't find them, you made them. All right, I understand. No, but I, I see what you mean. So you actually can't do anything with them yet. No worries, mate. We'll figure it out. Okay. Have faith there, son. Um, I got Sunday and Monday off, so. While I'm working with you and installing both MLB The Shows, I'll, you know, we'll do that. We'll get you hooked up with your decade, the 1990s. How's that? All right, so here is Scott Rowland now, with all that being said. Nothing for one. Here's the delivery from Mordecai Brown. Rowland swings, and this one a sinking liner to left, but right into the glove of Kai Kai Kyler. Kyler moving in about five steps, making a nice play on that one. One up, one down for lefty O'Doul. So yeah, um, we'll, I'll hit you up at some point. 
between now and then, Aaron. So, uh, right now you got a lot. You, you got the three seasons to come with it, so lots to play with. And that's cool. But we'll get you there, man. I haven't broken any promises to you. You got Action PC and Baseball for Windows. Work with you on both. We'll get you there, bud. I promise you. All right, lefty O'Doul is one for one. Mordecai Brown with three two delivery. O'Doul doubled his last time up, and this time lays off. So this one fastball missing low by three finger Brown. That's his first walk in the game to accompany his three strikeouts. Lefty O'Doul on base again, and here's Carlos Ruiz, the catcher, one for one. No speed on the base paths for the Philadelphia Phillies. Bancroft waits on deck, and Alexander in the hole. That's an old baseball term that we don't hear much these days. Here's the 0-2 delivery. Ruiz swings, and this one shallow. Oh, what a dive and stop in center field by Hack Wilson. And comes up with a little snow cone right at the edge of the webbing. Great play by the center fielder. Let's have a look-see, man. Nice play. Nice play by Hack Wilson. All right, two away, runner at first, and here is Dave Bancroft, who's now one. Brown winds and fires. Bancroft, first pitch swinging and stings this one to left. This is going to go in the corner for extra bases. And coming in, oh, he's making the turn at third. So Kyler with a good hustle. Not that O'Doul has a lot of speed, but Kyler misplays just a little bit, gets caught in a bit of ivy out there. The Phillies tie it up, but as it is, two down, two in scoring position. O'Doul at third, Bancroft at second, and here's Pete Alexander. He's one for one. He has a double. Brown from the stretch and the 3-1 to his mound opponent. Alexander swings. High fly ball to right. This should stay up long enough for Sammy Sosa to make the catch. So Philadelphia strands two. The score remains Chicago two and Philadelphia one. And do up. Rick Wilkins, Woody English, and Johnny Evers. Pete Alexander has struck out two, has not walked anyone yet. Lefty Wilkins in the box against Alexander. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Swung on. This one a sinking liner to right. And nice play by Chuck Klein to make that fly out. F9. So one up, one down for hot corner man Woody English. Nothing for three. Alexander to deal, the one-two pitch. Woody English swings, weak grounder to short. Gobbling it up over there at the number six position is Beauty Bancroft, Hall of Famer. And English is retired on the 6-3. Two quick outs here, and here is the crab Johnny Evers, nothing for one. Evers swings. Ground ball, this one going down the first base line. Evers going for two. Evers in there with that speed, and it's a stand-up double. So this one, a kind of little seeing-eye single. Getting past Ryan Howard, and the Cubs with a runner in scoring position, and two down for three-finger Brown. Brown has a single in this game. And this one, oh, nice, nice save by Carlos Ruiz. Bad pitch in the dirt by Alexander, but Evers will hold. So it could be a big play for Philadelphia right here. Two down, Evers at second, Alexander deals the 1-0. And this one. Routine fly ball to center field, and that will end the inning as Billy Hamilton calls off Chuck Klein and makes the catch. Side retired, no runs, one hit, no errors, and a runner left. We go to the fifth. It's the Chicago Cubs two and the Philadelphia Phillies one. 
it's fun playing with these um, with all-time great teams just to switch in different players in and out I love it I know some folks on this channel uh, or on, not on this channel whatever in this community feel that these are a waste of time I think they're fun I think they're just absolutely fun because even though they're all-time great players um, you know, in these franchises, it doesn't mean these are all the, like, elites playing elites, so. It's not like two teams of Hall of Famers, I guess, so that's why I like it. And it's fun, it's baseball. All right, Billy Hamilton, Chase Utley, and Chuck Klein do up for the fight fills. The one-two delivery from Three Finger Brown. So Hamilton singled his last time. High fly ball to right, going toward the foul line. And making the catch is Sammy Sosa. So that one's staying up there long enough for Sosa. Went up, one away. And here's Chase Utley. Chase Utley having a pretty good day at the plate. He's one for two with a run batted in. The sole Phillies run, and that was back in the third. Chicago scoring one in the first and in the second. Yeah. The one-two pitch to Chase Utley. Utley swings, and this one stopped at second very, very nicely by Johnny Evers. Evers firing on to Mark Grace for out number two. Chuck Klein, and there he is, Steve Tate. Steve, I was telling folks that you and I split a doubleheader last night. It was a lot of fun. Steve won game one at PNC. I won game two at Tiger Stadium, so... Each of the ballparks that we uh, picked for our Howie Shanks League. All right, thanks, folks, for hanging out. See, we've got eight people watching, and four of you have dropped likes, so 50%. I'll take it. Thank you very much. Brown sets and delivers to Chuck Klein, who is one for two. Klein flied out his last time up. He swings. This went into the alley and left, and this is, oh, diving stop to left center by Kai Kai Kyler. What a play. No runs, hits, or errors. No one left on base. The Cubs holding on to the 2-1 lead as we go to the bottom of the fifth. Let's have a quick look at that nice play by uh, Kyler in left field for the Chicago Cubs. Kyler covering so much ground. Dive and stop. Nice play. And speaking of Kai Kai Kyler making that great catch in left, he will lead it off at the top of the order here, followed by Mark Grayson and Wilson. Steve says that he is adding logos and player nicknames and ironing out an actual schedule for the league. No sleep for the weary or the wicked, Steve. And he is patterning the schedule after the 1968 National League season. All right, good stuff, Steve. Or as Steve calls him, Kiki Kyler. <laughs> I called him that for a lot of years until um, I learned from a number of sources that it's Kai Kai. In fact, um, it was one of the players, the audio for audiobook version of the glory of their times, that clearly says we called him Kai Kai because his last name is Kyler. So there you go. But Steve, dude. With all the work you do in all these leagues and everything you've done, if you want to call him Kiki, go for it, man. It's all good. Besides, I think only you and I and Ken and a couple other people know of Kyler, so it's all good. People in this channel know Kai Kai Kyler. We'll put it that way. All right, resets the target for Pete Alexander. Alexander has struck out two in four innings. The 0-2 to Kai Kai. And he swings. This one, a uh, little kind of semi rope to third, I guess you could call it. Scott Rowland making the throw on the first. And the speedy Kyler is retired. One away here in the bottom of the fifth for Mark Grace. Mark Grace, uh, looking for Mark Grace. The Cubs looking for the him to bust out a little bit. Uh, hitting only 125, though. Nothing for two today. Alexander wills and deals to him now. And there's a little comebacker to second, if you will. Chase Utley has it. And on to Ryan Howard for the 4-3 putout. Two up, two down for the Cubs. 
Pitcher stingy today. 13 hits in the game, but only three runs. Here's Hack Wilson. Run batted in for him. He's one for two. And here's Alexander's one-two delivery. And Hack Wilson sends a lazy fly ball to center coming in on it. And make it the catch is Billy Hamilton. Inning over. The Cubs go in order. But they still are in front of the Phillies. Two to one as we go to the sixth. The crowd here in Chicago on an April day. And actually, let me look at the temperature again. Very, very chilly here in the Commonwealth of PA. We only hit like 50, 51 in rain all day. So 41, so we're below average, and this is probably above average for Chicago in April. And Castro says, because it's just a head up, there's talk of a new APA tournament coming to New England. He's helping, um, you're helping the organizers. Perfect time to come. Uh, I would love it. Oh my god, hell yeah. New England in the autumn doesn't get any better, does it? Keep me informed, cuz. I'll be up there and uh, be glad to and I will buy a copy of APA. I'm not gonna be a I'm not gonna be a bum, I'm gonna bring me one, so definitely. Oh absolutely. You and I are gonna be only only people playing teams prior to nineteen thirty. <laughs> Yeah, keep me informed, cuz. Looking forward to it, man. New England in the fall, it's all good. <coughs> It'd be a privilege. All right. Here is Ryan Howard. The number four, five, six hitters due up for the Phils, followed by Roland and Lefty O'Doul. No theme yet. All right. It's, it's The theme should be, yeah, that we're going to teach these people about pre-1980 baseball. I don't know. Whatever. Looking forward to it, cousin. Mordecai Brown with the 1-0 delivery to Ryan Howard. Struck out his last time up. Ryan Howard swings. Gets a hold of this one. Long fly ball to right field at the track. At the wall. And this one is gone. This one needed a stewardess. I mean, got his money's worth on that. 378 foot shot by Ryan Howard. And the Phillies draw even here in the sixth. It is now two to two. And let's look at that big macaroni again. So this fastball up, and Howard just gets all of it. Boom. Touch them all, Mr. Howard. I wanted to move the camera up so that you could see the... Uh, one of the cool things that I love about Wrigley Field are still the uh, the pennants out in center field above that scoreboard right here that keeps the standings um, of the teams in the National League, which um, I love that they still do that in Wrigley. P.Q. River says, um, in ways free agency did something to what I liked about baseball. Odd when something so oppressive seems better, right? Ken Castro says the big piece with a blast. That deed was a blast. Howard getting all of that ball. All right, 2-2 two, two now. The Phillies uh, definitely making it a ball game here. That's uh, hit number eight for the Phillies opposed to six for the Cubs. Tied where it counts, though, two each. So Brown getting touched up here. Scott Rowland, nothing for two. The 2-0 two -oh delivery to Rowland. Rowland swings. The chopping ground ball. This one gets uh, past shortstop into center field. So Scott Rowland gets this one past Mr. Cobb. And that is hit number nine for the Philadelphia Phillies. And here is Lefty O'Doul. O'Doul one for one in the game. A runner on first. Rowland not very fast. But Brown checks the runner. The one one to O'Doul. O'Doul swings. This one, oh, this is going to be a st nice stop at second base by Johnny Evers. So, why no Ryan Sandberg? Because Johnny Evers is a pretty damn good second baseman, too. Certainly not the same stick, maybe, um, as Sandberg. But Sandberg, uh, or, but Evers doing an excellent job out there. So, one down. Um, for people asking, I've noticed this all-time league, though, does tend to favor... Um, more recent players, but there, it's also been ripe with mistakes, and so 
that's why I'm kind of taking my time going through teams and just making sure the proper people should be on here. And the the Cubs and Pirates, um, I don't know who researched these, but for the Pirates, they had Evan Meek as an all-time franchise great. It's like, nah, I think we're bringing in, you know, Dave Justy. I mean, Evan Meek, come on. And the Cubs had no Ernie Banks at all. That I couldn't believe that. So, um, if you're willing to squeak it, though, it's a fun little league to play. Till I think of uh, a big project to do with Out of the Park. Wilkins sets the target. Mordecai Brown pitching with one down. Carlos Reese swings. This one a grounder to short. And that's going to be out number two as Ernie Banks takes it to first. For out number two, the 6-3. And moving to third on the play is Scott Rowland. So two away. Philadelphia with the potential go-ahead run just 90 feet away from Beauty Bancroft who is one for two count even on Bancroft doubled back in the fourth and this time a big cut and a miss and Brown turns him away however one run and the big shot by Ryan Howard on two hits no errors a runner left on we head to the bottom of the sixth inning we're not at a two here at Wrigley Sammy Sosa, Ernie Banks, and Rick Wilkins. Pete Alexander peers in, has the sign. Here's the pitch. Sosa, a little number out in front of the plate. Carlos Ruiz making a nice play to retire Sammy Sosa. I think that was a little uh, kind of excuse me pitch. So Alexander pulling the string on that one. A little change up action. And here's Mr. Cub, who's not for two. Banks looking for his first hit of the season. Alexander deals the full count on Ernie Banks. And not going to happen this time. Ernie Banks falls prey to the Pete Alexander slider. Two away for Rick Wilkins. One for two for Wilkins. 3 1 delivery. Wilkins swings. Hard ground ball to first. And Ryan Howard will take it to the bag himself. So the Cubs go in order, and we go to the top of the seventh, and we are knotted at two. Pete Alexander, Billy Hamilton, Chase Utley for the Phils. Guys, hope you're enjoying the game. I'm having a lot of fun bringing it to you. Yeah, D. Scott Howard, I think he, he is uh, exactly I mean, what PQ uh, River was talking about, how something adverse can also be good for baseball. D. Scott Howard, I mean, I, I agree with you. He said it was nice when guys were stuck with teams, but certainly not a fair system. Certainly made it easier for making all-time leagues, <laughs> that's for sure, uh, before free agency. But now, wow, it's like, geez, this guy's going to be with the Reds this year, the uh, the Yankees next year, the Bucks the following year, what have you. It's nuts. I'm glad players have the freedom, certainly. The salaries, oh my god. The salaries are crazy. Let's just get rid of that stogie lighter. It's just no good. All right, Alexander ready to, to pitch, or ready to hit here. He is one for two with a double, and this time a little comebacker. Brown up with it, on to first. Two, Mr. Mock, Grace, and the one three is one down. For Billy Hamilton back at the top of the order for the Phils. Billy, one for three, full count on him coming from Brown. Hamilton swings, hard ground ball to second. This one taken on a short hop by Johnny Evers, and he'll fire on to Grace for the four three foot out. Two quick outs for the Phillies here in the top of the seventh, and it brings up Chase Utley. Utley with an RBI in this game. He's one for three against Brown. Brown with a 3-1. Brings it home. Chase Utley sends this liner to right, going back on it, and short of the track is Sammy Sosa. It's the seventh inning stretch here in Chicago. We're not in two. Waiting for Aaron Reed to say, let me hear you. We are at Wrigley, Aaron, so. Right. 
nice little stretch here in Chicago. We we'll go to the bottom of the seventh now, and it's going to be Woody English, Johnny Evers, and three finger Brown. 2 2 your score. Philly's very strong in the infield with Bancroft and Short rolling at third. Alexander with a 3 0 delivery now with Woody English grounded out his last time up. And English looks like he's going to ground this one, a slow grounder to second, but still plenty of time for Chase Utley to come up with it and takes care of English route number one. Um, I wanted to mention and thank Chris Slovak again. He had mentioned that setting this game to the animation to slow with the ballpark scale makes it look more realistic, and indeed it does. I like the way it looks. So for those of you who think everything's moving a bit too quickly on the screen, uh, try changing the settings to slow in animation. All right, the crab is one for two. Alexander has a full count on him now. Doubled his last time at Evers. Little slapper on the short. And Bancroft takes care of that bouncer. Two away here in Chicago 7 for Dave Kingman. So we have a Kong alert here. Kingman has two RBIs hitting 333 in the young season. 8 for 16. Has yet to knock a tater though. Alexander to the 1 2 to Kingman. He's going to hit a home run or strike out here. Let's see what happens. Strike out. It's a big swing and a miss. Fourth strikeout for Alexander in the game. Three up, three down. We go to the eighth inning. We are not at a two. Philadelphia will send Chuck Klein, Ryan Howard, and Scott Rowland. Uh, we will see then as far as. Uh, defensive substitution when we get to the bottom of the eighth. Or I'm sorry, we will we we'll see that now for Chicago. It's been a long day, guys. Um, and Lee Smith will come on to pitch. And so Kingman's job is done. He struck out. Lee Smith 0-1 on the season. He's worked two and two thirds, five hits, five earned runs, walk. No strikeouts in ERA, a rather stratospheric 16.88. Smith, an excellent, excellent fastball hitter. Good stuff, good movement, and good control. Chuck Klein, one for three, waiting for the slugger to do something. So uh, between the seventh and ninth innings, inning seven, eight, nine in the young season, I'm at two at bats. Um, Chuck Klein with a 286 average. Lee Smith has finished his warm up pitches and the 2 2 now from Lee Smith to Chuck Klein. Klein swings on this. Little dribbler to third. Klein could beat this one out. Nope, they got him by about two steps. So nice play there by Woody English at the hot corner to retire Klein for out number one. And here's Ryan Howard with that big blast, so solo shot. Tying it up for the Phillies in the sixth. Lee Smith set to deliver the 0-2 to Ryan Howard. Ryan Howard was swinging for the same spot at Wrigley and nothing but air as the Cubbies toss the ball around the horn. Third strikeout for Ryan Howard and Lee Smith's first. Scott Rowland, one for three, the two one coming to Rowland, new Hall of Famer. Bounding ball to second, and no, I'm sorry, frozen rope to second. Looked like that one came off the dish, but it didn't. So Ever stopping an extra base hit, possibly side retired. The Phillies go in order, bottom of the eighth, baseball fans, and we are still not at at two. Uh, this is when we start looking for defensive substitutions, not for Philadelphia, Kyler. Grace and Wilson do up for the Chicago Cubs. Yeah, definitely a tight game. Thank you. Reese with the signs. Alexander has one he likes. And there's Kyler. Base hit. Right field. This one getting by Howard. Good speed on the base pass for the Chicago Cubs, and here's Mark Grace. 
Grace a decent contact hit, a possible hit and run situation here for the Cubs brewing. Nobody out, runner on first. Bottom of the eighth, 2 2 your score. Alexander with four strikeouts. Sets and delivers. 3 2 pitch. This is a possible double play ball. Diving stop at second, but Utley cannot hold on to the ball. We'll see how the scorer does that. They're going to give him an infield single. Clearly, not sure. I would have scored that E4. Nonetheless, the Cubbies with two on and nobody out for half of Wilson. Phillies are with the, the Cubs with a chance to absolutely just break this game wide open with one swing of the bat. Wilson digging in from the right side. Looking like, looking like a walking barrel out there. Resets the target. Alexander with a check of the runners. Excellent speed at second and Kai Kai Kyler. Alexander with the wind and the pitch. And this one sent out to right and dropping gently into the glove of Chuck Klein. So the runners will hold. I'll bring up Sammy Sosa. So the power here now for the Chicago Cubs. Sosa one for three in this game. Two on. Alexander looking for the double play. Here's the 1-0 delivery to Sosa. Sosa swings, high fly ball to right field. And we'll see if they're gonna advance the runners. They will not. So Kyler thought about three. The Klein making the play out there. So two away, and it's up to Ernie Banks to try to make something happen in Chicago here in the bottom of the eighth. We are on the verge of possible extra innings here as Mr. Cobb stands in. Alexander shaking off for Reese, now has one he likes. Check the runners again, he sets and delivers. Count even on Ernie Banks. This one grounded shortstop to shortstop and trotting over and stepping on the bag by himself is Dave Bancroft to retire inside getting Mark Grace. No runs on two hits, two left on. We go to the ninth. Phillies and Cubs are tied at two. Lefty O'Doul, Carlos Ruiz, and Dave Bancroft. Lee Smith will stay on in relief. Wilkins with his target. The 0-2 delivery to Lefty O'Doul. Grounded out his last time up. O'Doul looks at a call, strike three. What a beautiful, beautiful pitch. Thrown by Lee Smith, and that's his second strikeout. This one painting the uh, inside corner, and here is Mike Schmidt. So many people, of course, some people questioning Evers at second, why Roland at third? Well, because the AI chose Mike Schmidt for this particular game. Uh, but Schmidt's been playing pretty regularly, but having a cold start, Phillies fans. Uh, he does have two home runs, two and two RBI. But he's only three for 17, so 176 for Schmidt. But always a dangerous hitter. Greatest third baseman in baseball at the plate now. Lee Smith deals the 1-1 to Mike Schmidt. Schmidt, little number in front of the plate. And Wilkins up with it, fires on to, Rick Grace, to Mark Grace to retire Schmidt. Two up, two down, so Schmidt has yet to go long anywhere, as far as meaningfully, I should say. All right, and here's Ed Delahanty. So Philadelphia is starting to go back in time a little bit here. Delahanty hitting an even 300 with a run batted in. Two away, bases empty. Lee Smith deals to Ed Delahanty. Here it comes. Delahanty swings, fly ball, center field. This one has distance, but not enough as it comes down into the glove of Pat Wilson. Side retired, and we go to the bottom of the ninth inning, and we are tied at two. Rick Wilkins will lead it off here, and uh, they're gonna allow Scott Rowland to stay in there short, but Beauty Bancroft's day is done. Jimmy Rollins will come in now to play short for Philadelphia. Everything else. Oh, and Andy Semenik will catch. Alexander staying on there with four strikeouts. We 
you got a good one going here, Cousin Ken. Alexander deals. Here's the 1 0 delivery to Rick Wilkins. Wilkins swings. This one a flare to right. It's going to get down for a base hit. And that is hit number nine for the Chicago Cubs. And these teams tied all, all the way across the line at 2 9 0. Woody English now. Nothing for two for the Chicago hot corner man. Alexander checks Wilkins at first, deals home, and Wilkins gets a good bunt down, so sacrifice. A little bit of small ball action. And English gets sacrifice number two, and the Cubbies now with a go-ahead run, well, actually the winning run at second. Johnny Evers up, Evers one for three. Cubs looking to walk it off here. Base hit. Could score Wilkins. 1-0 to Evers. Evers swings. This one, routine fly ball to right, and that's not going to be deep enough to get any score in. However, Wilkins tags at second and moves to third. So two down. Can Rick Stevenson do it? Stevenson into pinch hit, hitting two for five. 400 on the season. And in three at bats, um, in inning seven through nine, he's hitting at a 667 clip in the season. Alexander needing to make his pitch here from the stretch. The 0 1 to Rick Stevenson. Stevenson swings, routine grounder to third, up with it, and over is Scott Rowland to retire the side. So Stevenson does not get it down. No runs, one hit, no errors. A man left. And we have free baseball, top of the 10. And Kerry Wood will come on now to pitch and relief. So Lee Smith's day is done. And Kerry Wood, nothing, or he's 0-1 on the season. One and two-thirds innings pitch, three hits, one earned run, a walk, three strikeouts, and an earned run average of 5.40. We see a pinch hitter from Philadelphia now. Bobby Abreu will lead it off, and then we go to Billy Hamilton and Chase Utley. Abreu with a solo um, hit. I'm sorry, he's one for three with a home run. Three runs batted in, and hitting 333. And let's look at Abreu, just where he would possibly hit the ball. There we go. Nice little new feature out of the park 24. Kerry Wood ready to deal. The 1 2 pitch to Bobby Abreu. Swung and miss. Oh. So, little cutter there on the inside corner by Kerry Wood. And that is one out. And we go back to the top of the, or the, top of the order. And Billy Hamilton. Aaron Reed says, oh, baby, we got extras. Indeed we do, my friend. All right. Slide Billy, one for four. And again, part in the wrong picture there. I will fix that. 3-2 pitch to Billy Hamilton. Billy Hamilton. This one takes low. Ball four on the full count. And good speed on the base pads now for the fills. And here comes Chase Utley. Utley has an RBI in this game. He's one for four. Kerry Wood deals. Chase Utley swings. And this one should get down for a base hit. And indeed it does in front of Hack Wilson. And chugging for third in the tag at third. Strong throw by Hack Wilson. But the throw a little bit off target. And Hamilton safe. So Billy Hamilton winning the race. And here he is. Greg Luzinski. Luzinski. has walks in this season. So this is really his second plate appearance. And here's Randy Myers. So that's it for Kerry Wood. So Randy Myers now coming on here for the Chicago Cubs. Myers has worked one and two thirds with a hit and earned run, a strikeout, and a 5.40 run average. And Woe Nelly coming in there from Aaron Reed and Harry Carey and uh, Hulk Hogan, everybody, really, Marty Brenneman, and Ernie Harwell. 
All right, the southpaw Myers is done with his warm-up pitches. Here's the 0-1 delivery, and the runner goes, and this is going to be uncontested. So Chase Utley picking up the steal, and the Phillies in business with two in scoring position and one out, and Greg Luzinski in there. Luzinski with a swing of the bat. Do some major damage for the Phils here in the 10th. Lefty Randy Myers deals. Here's the pitch to Greg Luzinski, the 2 2. Right. Luzinski, this one, a strike three, and Wilkins drops the ball, and the boo's going up around Wrigley Field. So that is going to be a wild pitch. And Billy Hamilton scores on the play. Let's look at that one again. So Billy Hamilton so fast, I didn't even see him score. Let's just do the regular replay on this. Billy's lead, 3-2 here in the 10th. And there comes Billy Hamilton. So the Cubs hoping they don't lose this one on the wild pitch by Randy Myers. So here's Ryan Howard. Howard Homer back in the sixth to tie this game up. Luzinski at first, Chase Utley at third. Myers from the stretch in the one, two. And this one also gets by Wilkins. And can you believe it? Can you believe it? Randy Myers with another wild pitch. And scoring on the plays, Chase Utley, and it's falling apart for the Cubs here in the 10th. It is four to two now. Here's Ryan Howard back in the plate, or back at the dish now. And the count even on Ryan, and I, unbelievable. So I don't know whether they're getting uh, crossed up or what, but Wazinski now moves to third. Unbelievable. Randy Myers just throwing it all over the place. Kind of looking like Duke Lelouch out there. 3-2 pitch. And this one, not a wild pitch, but it's going to be a base hit. And that's going to be an RBI single for Ryan Howard. And Philadelphia now with a 5-2 lead here in the top of the 10th. Steve Tate saying that the team names and logos are on set for Howie Shanks. Bingo Baseball League 2.0. We will miss you in this one, cousin. We will definitely miss you, but I put together a pretty strong team, pretty proud of it. Uh, just an exhibition, which means nothing. Babe Ruth with two home runs. Jimmy Fox with one. Steve's got a killer team. Um, everybody picked really strongly this time. Everybody got some picks from heaven, that's for sure. All right. This has turned into a nightmare inning for the Chicago Cubs here in the 10th. As Scott Rowland comes to the play, one out, Ryan Howard at first. Randy Myers peers in, has the sign from Rook Wilkins. The 2 2 pitch to Scott Rowland. And Scott Rowland looks at the call, and strike three. So that fastball, and uh, Rowland couldn't even move on that. So Myers bringing some good old-fashioned country heat, you might say, 95 on the gun. Two away for lefty O'Doul. Howard remains at first. Myers with the 1-0. And you guessed it. Don't know what's going on with Randy Myers, but the Cubs maybe need to send their trainer out there. Let's see. Are they calling this one? No, this is not... It's pitched inside, but it looks like a pass ball this time. So Chicago battery, just an absolute mess here. Certainly not Duracell. Myers deals. Here's the 1-1. And this one spanked into right field. Base hit by lefty O'Doul. And O'Doul will not pick up the RBI, however. Strong, strong throw from Sammy Sosa. Gets the um, outfield assist. And Ryan Howard is gunned down. However, the Philadelphia Phillies score three runs on three hits. No errors, but there were a couple wild pitches and a pass ball. And we go to the bottom of the 10th. 
Philadelphia five, Chicago two. Chicago with three more chances. And the wild thing, Mitch Williams will come on and shut it, try to shut it down here for Philadelphia. Oh, I know I'm gonna love MLB the show, Aaron. Again, I am buying I'm buying it for that game and twenty two because more of the historical rosters were done by the modders. But yeah. Looking forward to tomorrow, 3.30. I go from work to GameStop to buy me a PlayStation 5. Can't wait. All right, we have defense, so defensive substitution, guys. Sorry for the bit of the slur. It's been a very long day, and I've got to talk to people all day. Granny Hamner will play second now for the Philadelphia Phillies. So Kyler, Grace, and Wilson, and I want to thank everybody for hanging out. We had... Uh, we had some good, uh, we had a nice little crowd in here, 10 at one time, which is very nice. Mitch Williams in the season um, has only worked an inning. He's walked two, struck out two. No earned run average for him. The lefty deals, the 1-0. Has the sign. And here is the pitch to Kai Kai Kyler. And Kyler shoots this one up the alley to left. And with Kyler's speed, this is easily going to be a double. And Kyler indeed slides in. O'Doul on the move, but Kyler just way too fast. And he is in there. So that is the 10th hit for the Cubs. The 22nd hit in this game. Kai Kai Kyler in scoring position, nobody out. And Hall of Famer Gabby Hartnett, homer in the Globe in 1938. Hartnett just one for six in the season 167. Hartnett, uh, good contact, good power. Kyler, supreme speed at second. Cubs by no means out of this. Mitch Williams with the full count now. Hartnett lays off. Ball force, a fastball missing a bit inside. Here we go. Hack Wilson is the tying run. He strides to the plate. Hack Wilson one for four with a run batted in. Bottom of the tenth. Philadelphia leading Chicago five to two. Mitch Williams into his motion. Here is the two one delivery to Hack Wilson. Fly out is the right time up. Wilson swings. This one high to left. This one deep. This one is out of here. Wilson ties it up in the bottom of the ten. Oh my god. And it is now five and five. So Mitch Williams played pretty accurately here, I guess. Um yeah. Just ask Joe Carter about Mitch Williams. A three run bomb by Hack Wilson. Watch that one again. Exit velocity at 103.8 miles per hour. Bam! Yeah, the Hackster got his money worth. That money worth there. Here we go. Ken says, you got to be kidding me. Kiki Rivers is a pleasant evening with the guys. With a holy cow. And here is Sammy Sosa. Sosa with a chance to walk it off here. Sammy, one for four. He has yet to homer in the young season. Four for 26 overall, one for four today. Sosa just hitting at a 154 clip. Mitch Williams pitching with nobody out. Here is the 0 1 delivery. Sammy Sosa, able to ride the deep right field the last time, and Sosa's gonna get a base hit to center field this way. Sosa thought about two. But the ball getting to Billy Hamilton, and Hamilton getting back quickly. So now, here is Ernie Banks. Mitch Williams needing to get past Banks here. Sosa at first. Mr. Cub, nothing before. Also, an extremely slow start for Ernie. 
0 for 9. To be fair, Banks has not played in every game. Banks playing platoon. Mitch Williams into his motion. First pitch swinging. It's Ernie Banks. Ernie Banks swings, and this one sent into the corner in left field. Don't think this is going to be enough, though. Don't know if Sosa is going to have enough speed. Banks in at second. Sosa makes the turn at third, and they flash the stop sign. Nobody out, and the Cubs threatening to walk it off here. What a ball game this one's been. And somebody asked, why no Ryan Sandberg? Well, here he is to pinch hit. Sandberg hitting 261 in the season. A home run, four runs bad in, six for 23 overall. So Sandberg in, Sosa at third, Banks at second, nobody out. Philadelphia had a 5-2 lead going into the bottom of the 10th, and Hack Wilson just absolutely clobbered the horse hide. Goodbye, Mr. Spalding. Mitch Williams now peers in, has the sign with catcher Andy Semenik. He works from the stretch. 2-2. Sandberg, oh, nice one, right down the middle, called strike three. So Mitch Williams bringing the fastball in the triple digits, challenging Sandberg and winning that one. One down, but it's not over yet. Here's Woody English, nothing for two. Woody English walk it off here. They're going to intentionally walk English with first base open. Interesting. So. Philadelphia looking for the double play here in the bottom of the 10th. And Avramis Avramirez will come in to pinch hit. Spent a little bit of time with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Ramirez just nothing for one on the season. Certainly um, has a bit of clout to get it done here, but uh, Philadelphia trying to reduce the double play ball here, keep this game alive. Williams from the stretch, 2-2. Ramirez swings, this one a sinking liner to right, and what a play by Bobby Abreu in right field to make the catch. So two down, Abreu coming in and that ball quickly, giving Sosa no chance at all to score. I mean, Abreu will look at that defensive play, getting that ball in quickly. So watch Abreu out there on the right. Coming in hard on this ball and just uncorks it back. No way Sammy Sosa was going to score on that. So now the pressure on, and here is Andy Pafko. So Chicago going deep into its bench. Pafko making his first plate appearance here in the season. Bases loaded. Can Mitch Williams get out of this inning not with any da not with any damage done of course a lot been done to try to keep it alive should that happen we'll see Andy Semenik, Jimmy Rollins and Bobby Abreu uh, do up for the Philadelphia Phillies in the 11th so said third Banks at first Woody or Banks at second Woody English at first for Andy Pafko Pafko wearing his Brooklyn Dodgers livery there in that picture. Mitch Williams sets and fires the 0-1 delivery. Pafko swings. Lazy fly ball to left. And this went down into the glove of lefty O'Doul. Bringing it in. Chicago scores three times with a three-run bomb by Hack Wilson. Tying it up. We go to the 11th. We are knotted at five. 25 hits in this game and 10 runs. Whew. All right. Andy Semenik, Jimmy Rollins, and Bobby Abreu. Ted Lilly now comes on. We've seen a lot. This is the fifth pitcher, I believe, we've seen for the Chicago Cubs. Frank Chance in at first now. Sandberg will stay in at second. And uh, Gabby Hartnett will stay in the catch. Ted Lilly, five and two thirds innings work for him. One earned run, three walks, five strikeouts, a 1.59 earned run average for Ted Lilly. The lefty was finishing his warm up pitches. The 0 1 2 catcher Andy Semenik for the Philadelphia Phillies in the top of the 11. Semenik swings, and this one, a short little flare out to shallow right. And right, Ron Sandberg moving out into the shallow outfield grass will make the cash route number one. Excellent range out there, so 
The Cubs very strong um, on the right side of the infield. On and on and on and on. This is Aaron Reed. A 5-5 tie. We've got us a good ball game here, baseball fans. Jimmy Rollins, one for one. Ted Lilly has the sign from Gabby Hartnett, the 0-1 to Rollins. Cut on. Grounded to first. And up with it is Frank Chance. Frank Chance throws on to Ted Lilly, covering for a 3 1 put out. And here is Dick Allen. He is making his first plate appearance batting with two down here in the 11th. 5 5 your score. Ted Lilly deals to Allen. And this one caught looking. So that fastball catching the outside corner. Nothing to cross for the Phillies. We go to the bottom of the 11th, not at a 5. And we're at the top of the Cubs order. Kai Kai Kyler, Gabby Hartnett, and the guy they don't want to see, Hack Wilson, who's going to get to bat. Al Holland will commit now to pitch for the Philadelphia Phillies. Holland, nothing, no wins, one loss. An inning pitched, two hits, one earned run, one strikeout, an ERA of 9. Uh, looking at defensive uh, substitutions here. So, uh, Big McBride in at right. Al Holland, the left. Pardon me, finishing his warm up pitches. Yep, speaking of free agency, says PQ River, Mr. Dick Allen. Again, thank you everybody for hanging out tonight for a little bit of Friday night baseball. There will be none tomorrow, but then Sunday we'll be hitting it, definitely. Al Holland, 2-0 delivery now. Coming in to Kai Kai Kyler. He's three for five. Kyler swings. Rounder to third. And setting and throwing is Scott Rowland. So the speedy Kyler retired. One away for Gabby Hartnett. Holland has the sign from Semenek. Count even on Hartnett. Walked his last time up, and Hartnett, big cut and a miss. So Holland going with a fastball there, 92 in the gun. Two up, two down for half Wilson, and Wilson with four runs batted in in this game, including three from a single swing of the bat. Now Holland delivers to half. Here it comes. Wilson swings. Chopper to short. And handling this bouncer is Jimmy Rollins. So side retired, Cubs go in order, and we go to the 12th by five. As Cousin Ken, who is a Philly fan, says his Philadelphia fans treated Dick Allen horribly. Dick Allen, what a player, huh? trying to remember I, if Steve is still here. I think Dick Allen made, pretty sure Dick Allen made the uh, Howie Shanks League this time around. So looking forward. Hope you guys will join us in probably the most unique, a reboot we had to, um, of probably the most unique uh, baseball draft you'll ever see. And encourage you to do it in your own sims. Maybe within your own channels if you want. Have fun with it. All right. Billy Hamilton. Granny Hamner and Bake McBride. Ted Lilly stays on. He's worked an inning in relief with a strikeout. Lilly deals now to Billy Hamilton. Who walked his last time up. He's one for four. Hamilton sends us a high fly ball to center field. I mean, this has got some serious hang time. And that one's going to drop into the glove of Hack Wilson. Waving off Kai Kai Kyler. One up, one down, and this is Granny Hamner. He is nothing for one overall in this season. 2-2 two -two to Hamner. Cut on. Easy ground ball to first. Frank Chance will take it to the bag himself. Two up, two down for Philadelphia, and here's Bake McBride. McBride wearing his Cardinals. McBride wearing his Cardinals livery. Um, those striped hats that baseball uh, teams were wearing for the bicentennial. 
making his first plate appearance. I think the Pirates were the team that stuck with those the longest, I think, into the early 80s. Trying to get that old-timey baseball look, and indeed a lot of 19th centuries did have those kind of square caps with the stripes going around them. Different time in the gritty cities of the day, right, PQ? That's what uh, Ken Castro is saying. People are quirksome at best, even to this day. It's this is PQ River. Ted Lilly ready to deal with two down, 2-2. Two -two. Big McBride swinging on the 2-2 two -two pitch and comes up with a big nothing. So Lilly getting the strikeout. And we go to the bottom of the 12th inning. Tied at five, it'll be Sammy Sosa, Ernie Banks, and Ryan Sandberg. Al Holland, who has a strikeout and one in the relief, will stay on to pitch. Everything else remaining the same for Philadelphia. These two teams battling out early in the season. Al Holland comes to his set position, and here's the pitch. Sammy Sosa lines this rope right to Granny Hammer gobbles that up for out number one. Here's Mr. Cub, who is one for five. Chicago fans hoping for lots for Mr. Banks, just right here. Full count to Ernie Banks. Doubled back in the 10th. Banks takes inside, ball four. Al Holland misses on that sinker. And Chicago with the winning run at first. Ryan Sandberg now, second baseman, strides to the plate. Sandberg came in, replacing Johnny Evers. Sandberg, nothing for one. Plea baseball fan has had time to record a game and come back. So he's got a game, new game up on his channel. He says, wow, game is still going on. Burn burner here, absolutely. Uh, poor Ken, that's not cool. Okay, so Dick Allen's in the first league, so no one took him this time. I see. He said just enhanced a nice image of the 1915 Baker Bowl. Nice. Okay, I got you. Okay, so it's recorded, not updated. All right, yep, we still got one going on here, Tim. A little bit of free baseball here. Ernie Banks at first representing the winning run, and here's Ryan Sandberg, Al Holland, studying his catcher singles. Signals has one he likes. Here's the 2-2. And, oh, big swing and a miss by Ryan Sandberg, trying to end it right there. It's a two away, and here's Woody English. So Chicago has both gone deep into its, into its bullpen and to its bench. English in the game is nothing for two. Banks into his lead at first. Al Holland sets and fires. And this one a wild pitch. The sinker low, and this gets away from Andy Semenik. And here we go now. Could this be the start of a little plague of uh, bad battery action here for Philadelphia? We saw it happen with Chicago. So Banks in scoring position, two down here in the bottom of the 12th. With English back in the box, and the full count on English. Sacrificed his last time up. Woody English cuts and misses, and that ends the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. A man left in scoring position. We go to the 13th. We are knotted at 5. And I will resist my usual homily, but leading off, pinch hitting, Sherry McGee making his first plate appearance for the Phillies in this season. McGee digs in on the right-hand side. Ted Lilly has worked two innings in relief with two strikeouts. The lefty deals to McGee. Here's the 0-2. Right, right. Oh, McGee. Little knee buckler painting the outside corner. And Ted Lilly has struck out his third. So can Scott Rowland do something here for the Bills? He is one for five, one down here in the top of the 13th. Lily sets, 
full count to Roland. The payoff pitch, swing and a miss. And right now, as the ball goes around the horn, I mean, Ted Lilly is starting to look like Rube Waddell out there. Four strikeouts for Ted Lilly. Two down for Lefty O'Doul. O'Doul is two for four. Hartnett sets the target. Ted Lilly winds and fires to O'Doul. And O'Doul swings. And this one high. This one deep. This one on the correct side of the foul pole. And see you later, Mr. Spalding. Lefty O'Doul going the opposite way. This one 376 feet. And the Phillies jump into the lead here at the top of the 13th. It is now 6-5. to five. What a ball game we have here. Let's have a quick look at that again. So exit velocity on that, about 97 and a half. And there it goes. And this one just there. So touch them all. Lefty O'Doul. So the two out home run taking Mr. Lilly downtown who was looking like Rube Waddell and here's Andy Semenik Semenik looking to uh, add a little bit of insurance here for the Phils in the 13th the Cubs will send up uh, Chance perhaps a pinch hitter for Lilly I would think and then Kai Kai Kyler when we go to the bottom of frame 13 Hartnett sets the target. Ted Lilly deals to Semenik. Count even on Andy Semenik. He uh, popped out last time. And this one, hard ground ball to third. Should be a problem as Woody English makes the play. A huge run, though, in. Thanks to Lefty O'Doul for the Philadelphia Phillies. They jump into the lead 6-5. to five. We go to the bottom of inning number 13. And here's Frank Chance. He's had one at bat in extra innings and uh, has done nothing. Chance otherwise hitting 286, 207. <coughs> Pardon me, please. Don Hurst will be playing first now for the Philadelphia Phillies. Al Holland with straight three strikeouts and a walk for two innings from the deep. The 1 1 now to Frank Chance. Peerless leader swings. This one sent up the alley in left, ranging back on it. And making a catch is Lucky O'Doul. <coughs> one down here in the bottom of the 13th, and here is Ron Santo. Ted Lilly's day is done, and Santo, not a bad guy to come off the bench. In fact, having a pretty damn fine start to the season, baseball. He's 6 for 19, a home run, four runs batted in, so hitting 316 overall. Santo could tie it up. And it's been a long work day. As much as I love baseball, but then still we got a little bit of time. Holland deals. Here's the 2 2. Ron Santo took too long to get in, Holland did. Grounder short hops to third. Scott Rowland fields it. On to Don Hurst for the 5 3 put out. Two away, and it's up to Kyler. Kyler not known as a home run hitter. But uh, 3 for 6 on the day. Could keep it alive here for Chicago. Al Holland ready to do it. Here it comes, Kyler. Kyler swinging on the first pitch. This should do it. Fly ball to center field. And ranging to his right. And waiting for it to come down is Billy Hamilton. And the Philadelphia Phillies once down by three runs in this game. Come back and win it here in the bottom of the 13th. Here in the final. Philadelphia 6, Chicago 5. Let's read the tale of the tape. So the Phillies improved to 2 and 4. The Cubs fall to uh, 1 and 5. Philadelphia Phillies. Um, scored a tight 6-5 win over the Chicago Cubs at Wrigley. Um, Philadelphia pitcher Pete Alexander held his own in the contest. Philadelphia reliever Al Holland picked up the win, upping his record to 1-1. Ted Lilly took the loss. Philadelphia goes 2-4. Uh, 
uh, Lefty O'Doul delivered a solo homer for Philadelphia in the top of the 13th. The left fielder went 3 for 5 in the game, including a home run, a single, and a double. He scored a run and batted in one. So look at the, that, that crazy, crazy, crazy graph just all over the place. Um, just, just amazing, amazing stuff. So um, what a great win. So actually, I'm sorry, it was the Chicago Cubs coming back from that big deficit, not the Phillies. Um, great, great win. Uh, Chicago, of course, with that three-run shot by Hack Wilson in the bottom of the tenth, and took 13 to resolve it. Player of the game. And let's see who's getting the player of the game here. There we go, Pete Alexander. There you go. Let's leave the game. And we'll look at the standings. There's still some good matchups here, so I'm taking this really slowly. But let's look at standings really quickly, and then we'll do it. So Tampa Bay in the American League East, um, leading first place. I'm sorry, six six wins, no losses. Um, Boston Red Sox, New York Yankees, each at three and two and two and a half back. The Toronto Blue Jays at one and five. And the Baltimore Orioles looking for their first win. They are 0-4 in the American League Central. The Cleveland Indians at 5-1. They're a full game up on the Minnesota Twins, who are 4-2. and two. Um, Then the Detroit Tigers um, at third place at 2-2 two and, two and two games back. The White Sox at 2-3, two 2.5 and two and back, along with the Kansas City Royals. In the American League West, the Seattle Mariners off to a good start. They are 5-1, and one, the Los Angeles Angels. 3-2, and two, tied with the Texas Rangers, each one and a half games back. Houston Astros at 1-4, and 3.5 and back. And the Athletics, um, what a horrible start. They are 0-6. In the senior circuit, the New York Mets um, in the National League East at 4-1. and one. They're a game up on the Atlanta Braves, who are 3-2. and two. The Phillies, 2.5 back to 2-4. and four. The Nationals at one and four, three games back, and the Marlins three and a half back at one and five. And the National League Central, it's the St. Louis Cardinals and Milwaukee Brewers tied for first, each at four and one. The Bucks um, are a game back at three and two. The Cincinnati Reds are one and four and three back. Chicago Cubs one and five, three and a half out. The LA Dodgers, five and two. They're a half game up on the Giants and the Rockies, who are each at four and two. The Padres are two and three and two back. And the Arizona Diamondbacks, three and five and two and a half out. So um, again, very, very early going. We're just moving into pretty much games six, seven, whatever. But a lot of fun. So I hope you guys like it. We're gonna go ahead and save this game and uh, have a couple minutes here to chat, and that's it. Oh, you are most welcome, cousin. So, uh, good, good stuff. Cannot wait to get MLB the show tomorrow. All right, that's it. Um, hope everybody has uh, a great day tomorrow. Um, I don't expect to be. If I do, it'll just be for maybe a quick game or something if I decide to uh, come on. But if not, I'll see everybody on Sunday. Always good to see the family in here gathered round. Ken Castro, PQ River, Clee Baseball Fan 879, the illustrious Steve Tate, um, PQ River, Aaron Reed. I'm going to say people's names twice, but that's all good. Twice the love. D. Scott Howard. Thank you very much, man. Always, always, always so glad you're in the Howie Shanks League. It is so good. John DFW. And did I say Aaron Reed? We have to say Aaron Reed a number of times because, uh, let's face it, Aaron is the man of a thousand voices. That's right. League of Legends, buddy. All right, guys. We'll see you around the batting cage. And um, uh, you may do another. Oh, d do you know when, Steve? Because um, I've got a little bit of time to watch a game. But do you, do you know roughly how long a bit is like if it's like 45 minutes from now I'm not going to be able to catch it but I'd love to catch a game so you just do one you can go in 5 minutes alright I'll be looking for you man
So guys, if you're up for some more baseball, uh, Steve Tate is going to be doing a little um, exhibition action, I'm assuming against the AI, um, of the Howie Shanks League. So maybe he'll just put up two teams there. Don't know what devilry he's up to. As PQ River says, hmm, you may just find me there. All right. So hopefully to see all of you, if possible, um, on Steve Tate's channel. And if you haven't subscribed, why haven't you? All right, guys. Uh, it means so much to me that you guys hung out tonight. It's family, right? Till next time, see you around the batty cage.